All right. So today, I think let's take a step back and make it simpler. So I'm going to try to make this very, very basic for everybody so that you get the salient points. If you talk to your nephrologist, they will add a step and quantify the amount of protein. So it won't be exactly these stages. In other words, you will see another letter added on, but don't let that confuse you because there are still five stages and those five, even though they're divided and it gets confusing, you want to understand the basics. So the best way to understand the stages of kidney disease is to essentially break them into two categories. One category is what we call the early stages. Early stages are typically stages one through three. Late stages, makes it easy to remember early and late, late stages are stages four and five. So now let's talk a little bit about the early stages so you guys have the basics. Stage one, and by the way, the way you define these stages is also important to understand. So we'll talk about that. Stage one is where your kidney function is above 90 mils per minute. So in other words, your GFR is greater than 90. So a lot of people walking around have GFRs higher than that. So does that mean they all have stage one? The answer is no. You are looking for not just the GFR, but also signs of kidney damage, which is protein in the urine. So in other words, GFR is greater than 90 and protein in the urine. Stage two, still an early stage. It's considered mild chronic kidney disease. So GFR is about 60 to 89.9. So 60 to 89 mils per minute. The stuff is the same as CKD stage one, where you're really not going to have any symptoms come out of either one, stage one or stage two. You may have protein in the urine. So in other words, we are looking for signs of kidney damage. So you would see protein in the urine. Now, stage three we divide it into two pieces, stage 3A and stage 3B. The only reason we do that is because there's a distinction when you get to stage 3B in that the symptoms start to get worse. So stage 3A is considered 45 to 59 mils per minute on your kidney function, and stage 3B is 30 to 44. The thing that becomes important in stage 3 especially stage 3B, is that the waste products that your kidneys normally filter are starting to build up. So for example, people start to notice that they are having higher blood pressures in stage 3, specifically in stage 3B. You may also notice that you're starting to have swelling. Typically, the swelling starts in your legs and feet, but it can also go to your hands in some cases when it's significantly worse. Systemic symptoms or how you feel. Some people already at stage three start to notice that they're getting more and more tired. So those are all the early stages. Now let's get into the late stages. So for example, stage four. Stage four is a kidney function 15 to 29. But the thing that matters here is this is where not only are you going to start to see the high blood pressure, you're also going to start to see bone disease occurring. So there's issues with bone remodeling. We know that chronic kidney disease is closely linked to heart disease. And so you will start to see that there's also heart disease with it. And the thing that matters is, is those symptoms, swelling, fatigue, all of those things can start to get significantly worse. So at stage four, you absolutely want to see your nephrologist. Usually at stage B is where most areas will say, you got to see a kidney doctor. If you are in a place where you can see them sooner, that's always better. But either way, if you're at stage three, B or four, absolutely. The sooner you see a kidney specialist, the better off you're going to be because we can work with a team. So our team will be we have our renal dietitians, we have our social workers, we have an entire team to be able to work with you. So the sooner you come to us and work with our team, the better the odds of slowing everything down. And finally, stage five, which is a kidney function of less than 15 on the GFR, so less than 15 mils per minute. The idea there is, is pretty much your kidneys have either already stopped or they're close to stopping and the waste products are building up. This is where when you look at the episodes with Michelle and I on potassium, on phosphorus, on metabolic acidosis, all of those things are absolutely critical. 
And so as you think about these five stages, you want to have a very good idea of what are the things that are happening. As you progress into the kidney disease, you're going to have what we call essentially protein energy malnutrition. So you're going to see that because of the fact that you're building more acid in the body, you're also breaking down muscle. So you have loss of lean body mass, you're getting more tired because you're starting to have weakness. And it's all because of the fact that there's more acid that's building up inside the blood. You also see that there can be things like not just swelling in the feet and working its way to the hands, but it can end up in the lungs. And general symptoms, whether that's fatigue or tiredness, you can't exercise as much. But the stuff that people don't notice is the impact on the brain. So people will have issues with remembering things, memory issues, common colds or normal illnesses become higher and higher. And this is why as you progress down the stages, you have to understand that as those stages are getting worse, all of these symptoms can get worse. And some of the most serious symptoms as stage five can be things like inflammation around the heart. We call that pericarditis, which can be very severe because there can be fluid that can get trapped between the lining of the heart and the heart itself. And that's called a tamponade. And it's a life-threatening thing. We can have people where they're completely confused and that's called encephalopathy. Of course, skin issues are very common. People say, look, I can't stop itching. And the reason is, is because of the buildup of those toxic products and sleep. As much as we talk about sleep, as you progress in those kidney diseases, the quality of sleep starts to get worse. In men, they may also notice erectile dysfunction in men and women, decreased libido, there's decreased desire for those things. And of course, from a blood level, you start to see issues happening where your blood doesn't clot as well, where the platelets don't work as well. So in terms of these stages of CKD, just because you have a stage and you're not having symptoms, it doesn't mean that inside your body, there isn't stuff happening. This is a really, really tough question because it is so individualized. But what we do know is that if you do the diet and if you do the lifestyle with this stuff, in other words, you cut out the smoking, you're sleeping, you're moving more, you're eating a predominantly plant-based diet and not a processed one, but a predominantly unprocessed. In other words, the more whole foods you can do, the better. So a predominantly whole food diet. If you're doing those things and you cut out the alcohol and all that stuff, you can actually halt or even go backwards in terms of improving the function. So in other words, sometimes we see that the GFR doesn't actually reflect the ability of the kidneys. It's just that there may be some other issues going on. You're spilling too much protein, so you're dehydrated and so forth. But as you start to fix those things, as you bring the weight to a healthy level, you will see that the GFR improves. Now, the part that becomes important is what if you're not, if you're not doing anything, what you want to understand is that absolutely your risk of dying sooner increases. So when I was trying to see if there was any data that we could talk about today. You know, some of the, the anecdotal websites like Davida and so forth, American Kidney Fund and so forth, what they say is if somebody's around age 60 and they have stage one or stage two kidney disease, their life expectancy is reached to about 15 years. If somebody is stage three or four, their life expectancy starts to do about eight and six years respectively. This is for a 60 year old person. Now for women, it's a little bit better than it is for men. But even then, what you want to understand is if you have chronic kidney disease, absolutely, it will decrease your life expectancy, whether you're 60 or whether you're 19 or 18 years old, you have to know this. And because it's so hard to give you a number, because it depends on how much protein you're spilling, whether you're diabetic or not, whether you're having suffering from obesity or not, what's your blood pressure control like. So that makes it tricky. Overall, life expectancy will decrease. But if you do the right stuff, there's a very good chance you can stop the disease where it's at right now. So, you know, this is this is a, um, a numbers game. In other words, people get so obsessed about these things. And I know certain people in certain communities are like, oh, I, I cured this person of their kidney disease. Well, no, you didn't. You didn't. So what happens with kidneys is 
when you're born, you're born with a million cells in each kidney. And the only thing that happens is they die. So what's left, let's say you're down to 600,000 cells. What's left is actually going to take on the function of everything else. So we're not measuring kidney function. That's an illusion. We are basically getting an estimate of kidney function by seeing how much creatinine is left in the blood. That's it. So in other words, there are so many ways to cheat the system. You could drink a bunch of water before you do the blood test and it looks like your GFR went up. If you lose a bunch of weight, you also lose muscle. You're producing less creatinine. So your GFR looks better. So my question then is, well, you went from stage four to stage two. That doesn't mean your dietitian, your nephrologist, your guru, whoever you went to did something amazing. It just means that now you're producing less creatinine and that's what we're measuring. So I think it's really important that the goal is not to go backwards or forwards. The goal is, is can we improve the things that are going to kill you faster? Protein in the urine the blood pressure, the blood sugars, the weight, all of those basic things, the lipids, and of course, any bad habits, smoking, drinking, alcohol. If we do those, then that's a better way to answer that question than to get stuck on trying to go backwards. Because I had a conference recently that I hosted where one of our speakers was talking about how they've taken people back. And the problem is, is it, it takes away from the idea because when you put somebody on the life-saving drugs, the ACE inhibitors, the ARBs, the aldosterone antagonists, the SGLT2 inhibitors, the GLP-1 agonists, when we do that, the kidney function actually looks worse. In fact, how we know the drugs are working is if you see a decline in the GFR. So very tricky question to answer because absolutely, if it's just a number to make better, yeah, we can make your number look better. Thanks, guys.